Welcome back everyone to this new video in the 11AX series and today we are going to discuss the MAC layer enhancements that 11AX uh, brought into the table um, to enhance or make Wi-Fi more efficient. In the first place we are going to discuss two procedures or methods uh, called physical and virtual creations. And before we dig deeper, someone might wonder uh, why we would discuss the phi while we are talking about MAC layer enhancements. To answer this question, um, if we recall from Wi-Fi 101, both the physical carrier sense and virtual carrier sense procedures are methods uh, defined in the original 82.11 standard in order to validate if the medium is busy or idle and ready for transmission. Now, the physical uh, carrier sense is performed at layer one or the phi layer. The virtual carrier sense is performed in the layer two or the max sub layer uh, of the data link layer. Now, these two methods, uh, regardless uh, of the fact that each one operates in a separate layer or sub layer, both of them actually report to the MAC layer. What I mean by that is the following. Now, here we have the uh, physical carrier sense, and here we have the virtual carrier sense. Virtual carrier sense. Now, the physical carrier sense operates in the PMD layer uh, of the file layer, okay, or sub layer of the file layer. So it will sense the medium, and if it detects uh, uh, the medium as busy, it will actually send or order uh, the MAC sub layer via something called service primitives, okay, uh, to stop uh, sending down um, 82 to 11 frames for transmissions. Same case would happen here. If the virtual carrier sense uh, detect that the, the, that the medium is busy, then it will also order the MAC not to uh, send down 82 to 11 frames uh, for transmissions. So, as you can see, I have decided to put the physical and virtual carrier sense together under the MAC layer uh, because these two actually reports to the MAC, regardless in which layer they operate. That is uh, something I wanted to mention here. Okay, good. Let's clear things. Now, um, Let's recall, we have the OSI layer model. We have layer two of the data link, layer one of the physical uh, layer. So each layer is subdivided into a sub layer, LLC or logical link control. It's out of the scope of the Wi-Fi discussion. Um, actually, Wi-Fi starts at this sub layer. Uh, also the phi layer, uh, is subdivided into PLCP, Physical Layer Convergence Protocol layer or sublayer, and Physical Medium Dependent. Now, the data, which is the packet, okay, that is coming from layer three or, uh, yeah, uh, layer three uh, within the OSI model, it will reach the LLC and it will be called as MSDU. Now, as it travels down uh, and the MAC uh, sublayer adds its uh, header, then it will be called MPDU. After that, as it travels down, here it will be called PSDU. Uh, and once the PLCP sublayer adds its uh, preamble and phi header and send it down, then it will be called a PPDU. So I'm just mentioning this for your reference. It's good to know them. 
Now, uh, as we have discussed, our main uh, topic uh, at the MacLear enhancement uh, is the physical or the virtual career sense. So the physical career sense operates in the file layer, and the virtual career sense uh, operates in the Mac layer. Now let's look at each one of these. Um, in a prior 11AX deployment. So now, for example, let's consider 11AC or 11N uh, deployment, okay? Um, we will understand how it used to operate um, in a prior 11AX deployments, and then we will compare that with 11AX, by which we will understand the enhancement that 11AX introduced uh, to the Wi-Fi and uh, call it a day on this topic. Okay, good. So now let's start from top to bottom. Now, at the Mac sub layer, we have something called NAV. So what is a NAV? It stands for Network Allocation Vector. And it is simply uh, a timer that is used to indicate how long the medium, the Wi-Fi channel, or the frequencies will be busy for the rest of a transmission of the remaining frames. Okay? Um, let's just define these for now, and then we can move. So, uh, we said it's a timer. So you might expect to see, let's say, 100 microsecond inside, uh, inside that timer. Um, each station would have its own nav, and um, it will not start uh, transmitting unless it senses that the medium is not busy. And after that, it will uh, continue to decrement the timer until it reaches zero. Once it reaches zero, then the station can move to the next step of frame transmission. I didn't mean here that the station can transmit. The station can move to the next step of preparing the transmission. We will discuss this, okay? Uh, this is about the nav. So it is simply a timer that is decremented until it reaches zero. Once it reaches zero, the station can contend for its turn to the medium. Okay, good. Now, in the physical layer, we have the uh, uh, physical carrier sense. So we need to first define the carrier sense. I forgot to mention this. So what is a carrier sense? And it's better to define it within the physical layer context to be uh, well understood. So basically, it's a mechanism um, that is originally defined in the 802.11 standard, uh, same as the VCS. Uh, but um, at the file layer, um, it allows a SISMA, we already discussed about this, SISMA CA device uh, to examine if the medium is busy or idle. So, Using, let's say, the radio interface of the device or of the access point, we can sense the medium and design, decide if we have uh, Wi-Fi transmissions or non-Wi-Fi transmissions, um, verify or compare them with a certain threshold and verify if the medium is busy or not. Now, uh, inside uh, the uh, physical carrier sense, we have two main methods. So uh, the first one is called signal detect or preamble detect, okay, PD. And the second one is energy detect. So the signal detect is the method used to sense Wi-Fi transmissions, okay? The energy detect, as the name implies, it is used to uh, detect any energy that is non-Wi-Fi. So, for example, you might have a cordless phone or any other non-Wi-Fi device that is performing transmission in, in the channel um, 
so it will be considered an energy, but it's non-Wi-Fi. So it has a separate mechanism to actually um, uh, detect it or sense it. Good. Now, okay, so we have two methods. The first one to detect Wi-Fi and the other detect non-Wi-Fi. But what is the criteria that we use at the physical layer in order to uh, verify that the, the, that the medium is busy or not. Well, as you can see here, we have uh, this rule which, which says any Wi-Fi transmission, I'm talking about signal detect or preamble detect, any Wi-Fi transmission that is 4 dB stronger, uh, 4 dB stronger than the noise floor, okay, and we have sufficient SNR in order to decode it, then this would, um, um, let's say, result in reporting medium as busy, okay? Uh, nowadays, we have, let's say, uh, Wi-Fi vendors uh, defining something called Rx sensitivity, uh, which is the sensitivity threshold of the radio of the access point. So this value actually uh, is hard coded at neg 82 dB or dBm. So we will consider this value as the threshold used for nowadays Wi-Fi um, for the signal detect. Okay? Good. <clears throat> so what does neg 82 mean? So it means, for example, assume I am a client within a cell, and I received a transmission that is neg 80 uh, in terms of signal strength. What should I do? This would render the medium busy because it is stronger than this threshold. So this client has to wait for its turn to contend for the medium again. But if the transmission that I received or, or that I heard, okay, uh, within the channel is, let's say, NIG84, then I can discard that and uh, I can simply uh, transmit. Okay? Um, by following this rule, uh, let's call that uh, uh, the noisy floor is NIG86. So if we make, uh, uh, of, or if we do the math, then uh, the threshold would be uh, this value that we already uh, talked about. Okay, good. So this threshold, the summary, is that this threshold, okay, will be used as the value to, uh, to use in order to decide whether to defer the transmission for this station or just simply to, to try to transmit. Okay. Now for the ED, we have separate criteria. So what is ED, energy detect for non-Wi-Fi uh, transmissions? We call them usually interference or Wi-Fi interference. So what it does is it says, uh, if I detect energy that uh, its value equal to uh, 20 dB, 20 dB more uh, compared to the threshold that is used here, then I would consider the medium is busy. For example, uh, we said that our threshold for signal detect will be used as NIC82. Energy detection will add 20 dB to this number, so it will be NIC62. So if I hear any non-Wi-Fi transmission, equal to this number or stronger, the medium will be busy. So station would deter, would defer the transmission. Uh, on the other hand, if it is NIG67, depending on uh, the protocol, the station should proceed in order to uh, uh, get its uh, transmit opportunity to transmit. Okay? Now, this is the a normal protocol behavior uh, prior 11AX. Now, what enhancements 11AX has introduced uh, 
um, to the physical creations and virtual creations. Okay, now since 11AX is targeting high density environment, okay, then we might have uh, multiple cells, okay, smaller cells that are close to one another, and we might have this running on channel 48, for example, and this or this running on channel 48. Now, it's not a good design to have uh, these two channels, but you have to reuse the channels in order to cover the area. Now, with the uh, or with uh, the procedures used prior 11AX, if a station is transmitting here and this station that is associated to this access point, uh, here's the transmission on values stronger than the threshold that we have discussed, then this station would defer the transmission. It has to wait. So this is something we already discussed. It introduced a lot of delays to the Wi-Fi. Now 11AX comes in order to make Wi-Fi more, more efficient. So it actually introduced uh, multiple features in order to allow uh, this station to transmit as well as this station to continue its transmission uh, in parallel uh, without having uh, any one of these to defer its transmission because the other is transmitting on the other cell. By the way, we call this OBSS, Overlapping uh, Basic Service Set. Uh, they are running on both channels, so a transmission within one uh, BSS would defer the transmission in the other BSS because they are using uh, the same channel. Now, 11AX introduced a new feature. It's called BSS, color. We will discuss this uh, in the next slide uh, uh, that help uh, actually um, enhance uh, the transmission of uh, the concurrent transmission of both stations uh, that are considered OBSS. Okay. Uh, but before we get into this in the next slide, um, let's get back to the virtual currencies. So 11AX now at the max sub layer, started to use at least two navs, not only one nav. So if you hate timers, then 11AX loves you because it introduced more timers, okay? Uh, also, the other change is the signal or preamble detect threshold. So as we said here, uh, the rule of thumb is 4 dB um, uh, above the noise floor, but in, to in, in today's Wi-Fi, uh, many vendors um, hard-coded this as receive sensitivity equal to NIG82. So anything below NIG82 will be considered as a background noise and will be discarded uh, um, in the decision-making. Uh, process, while if it is stronger, then it will defer the transmission. And uh, now in 11AX, we no longer hard code this value, we leave it to the Wi Fi designer. So, a Wi Fi designer who designed the Wi Fi coverage in a certain venue or a certain area may decide that NIG uh, 78 would be the best threshold for this. So you can change that number. You can configure it. Uh, now, uh, this number, uh, what, what do we achieve by changing this number? We achieve that uh, we can introduce um, uh, the ability uh, for more stations to uh, transmit at the same time. Uh, while if we keep it with this number, we would uh, increase the number of waiting uh, stations in the waiting list, waiting for their turns between BSSs, okay? Don't worry, we will use a numeric example uh, with uh, numbers in order to explain 
how the normal pre 11 ax operation with one nav, uh, one sig signal detect and energy detect, and we will actually reuse the same example uh, with the numbers, uh, but with two navs and uh, with configurable value. But before that, let's first uh, uh, discuss the uh, next topic or the second enhancement, which is the BSS color. Okay, let me clear things. I think it's better if we stop here for now in order to avoid long videos. See you in the next section and thank you for watching.